What's going on YouTube? It's Katie from EO Fitness here and today I want to take you through a barbell back squat. This is a video that I've been wanting to put out for some time now and I finally have the space to do it so let's dive into it. The barbell back squat is pretty complex and I always personally recommend starting out with a goblet squat and then a front squat and then moving into the barbell back squat. So if you have not mastered the goblet squat or the front squat yet, get to work on that before you tackle this one. But without further ado, let's just dive into it. Let's get moving. So first we have to set our rack up to our appropriate height. So we want this at about shoulder or rear delt height. So let's go ahead and set this up to where we want it. If you're like me and you're between rack heights, I always personally recommend having it lower rather than higher. You don't want to have to come up onto your tippy toes in order to unrack this bar. So it'll just take a little bit of trial and error, finding out your perfect rack height and just getting these all set up. All right, once we've got this set up to our height, we're going to set up underneath the bar. Now you can set up either high bar, low bar, or somewhere in between. Just find somewhere that feels comfortable for you. Now something important before we even get underneath the bar is your footwear. So I personally wear Olympic lifting shoes or squat shoes. You do not need squat shoes by any stretch of the means. You just need a stable foot. So if you are squatting in like a running shoe, I highly recommend against it. The squat starts at the feet. That is our base. We want the most stable base that we can possibly find. So getting something as flat as possible is going to help you out a ton in stability. So barefoot, converse, vans, or even an Olympic lifting shoe. Now setting up underneath the bar, we want to set up either on the upper trap, on the rear delt, or somewhere in the middle. Now, if you are somebody that is always like, oh, I feel so much pain in my neck when I back squat, one, you probably have your bar set up too high, and two, you're probably not pinching your shoulders together enough to create a nice little pillow with the traps to actually support that bar. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Where you place your hands does not matter. You just need somewhere that's comfortable for you to actually get back into that position. I know people that squat super, super close. I know people that have to squat all the way out here. I'm somewhere in the middle, just find what's comfy for you. So from here, we're gonna find our grip width. We're gonna get under the bar and I'm gonna pinch my shoulder blades together. Okay, so notice how this makes a little pillow in the traps for me to perfectly place that bar on. I actually have a little meaty spot to place that bar instead of just placing it on the actual vertebrae here, okay? I wanna pinch my shoulder blades together, give myself somewhere to actually put that bar. You can have your thumbs unhooked or wrapped around, it does not matter, whatever is most comfortable. This is gonna be a high bar position. This is going to be more of a low bar position. It's just about, again, finding what's comfy for you. So once you find that spot, we're gonna unrack the bar, we're just gonna stand up, straighten out our knees. And I'm just gonna take a couple of steps back. You don't wanna walk a mile out of this squat rack. Just two, three, or four steps is perfectly fine. Now from here, I'm going to find what width I want my feet at and what angle I want my toes at. Now you can squat however feels comfortable for you. There is no one golden rule of how to squat. It is so customizable to you, your body, your proportions, and your leverages. So you can have your feet close, you can have your feet wide, you can have your toes straight, you can have your toes pointed out, or any combination of all of that. Me personally, I have a kind of wide, kind of normal squat stance with my toes slightly pointed out. This works best for me and my mobility. From here, I'm gonna make sure I have equal weight in the big toe, pinky toe, and heel of my foot. I'm gonna screw my feet into the floor. I'm gonna make sure my ribs are pressed down into my belly button, and I'm thinking about breaking this bar in half or bringing my elbows towards my ribs. I'm gonna take a big breath into the belly. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna squat all the way down and exhale at the top. Now let's go over some common mistakes. There are a bunch. So let's start diving into it. Let's start picking this apart. The first most common mistake that I see is people only sitting back. The second most common mistake I see is people only sitting forward. So let's look at those two and we will dig into them. So people only squatting back stems from years and years and years, in my opinion, of people saying your knees can't pass your toes. Your knees can pass your toes. Please, for the love of everything, your knees can pass your toes. So if you've been taught that your knees can't pass your toes, your squat probably looks a little something like 
this. And you say, why can't I get any lower? There's nowhere else to go. Yeah, because your knees have to move forward as well. The other most common mistake that I mentioned is people only sitting forward with their knees and they say, why can't I go anywhere? Well, because your ankle has nowhere else to go, right? So a perfect squat is a balance between the hips going back and the knees falling forward. We need both of them in order to have a balanced squat. Let's get even more specific. In a back squat, we want our hips to break slightly before our knees. What does that mean? We want this to move before this, okay? So a lot of times I see people break at the knees and then try and sit their hips back and they're like, oh shoot, I'm still stuck, I still can't go anywhere, right? We want all of this to move before all of this. We gotta give this somewhere to go, okay? So it happens very fast, you may not always see it in real time unless you slow it down or unless you have an eye for it. But in slow-mo, it's gonna look a little something like this. Okay, so if you see right at the top, this moves first and then the knees start to bend. Other more common mistakes, people only putting weight in their heel or people only putting weight in their toe. We want equal weight, big toe, pinky toe, heel, really focusing in on that tripod foot. And then last but not least is knee valgus. This may be something you can just think about and fix, or it could be something that oftentimes actually stems from the foot, but a lot of times is treated at the glute. It could be a weak glute medius, but more often than not, I see people pronating or falling to the inside of that foot, causing that knee valgus, but it's often treated up here and saying, oh, do a bunch of band walks and that'll fix it. Maybe, but we also have to take a look at the feet. So that is the barbell back squat. I hope that helps and follow along for more.